Hi, in this video about buffer functions, I'll walk through how to create this interactive visualization to help find an Airbnb in London that is within 500 meters from an EV charging point. We'll look at how to use buffer functions as part of a spatial join, how to use the make point function to turn latitude and longitude values into spatial points, and how to use the distance function to add interactivity. To help with this analysis, I've downloaded a file containing data on all Airbnbs in London, including their location encoded by latitude and longitude fields, and I've also downloaded a file containing the details of all EV charging points in London, again with their locations. And you can find links to these data sources in the description below. Okay, let's jump into Tableau and get started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is connect to the data. So we're gonna drag in the Airbnb data, drop that into Tableau, and Tableau will make that connection. We'll then head over to the first sheet. And what I want to do is create a spatial point for each of the Airbnbs in the file. So to do that, I'm gonna go and create a calculated field. I'm going to call this Airbnb points and I'm going to use a spatial function in Tableau which is make point and what this function does it takes in two numbers two decimal numbers which is the latitude and the longitude and it converts those into a spatial point that Tableau can then map okay so then I can go ahead and drop the Airbnb points into the view and see that Tableau draws those on a map but it's brought everything in as one single point at the moment you can see that on the lower left we just have one mark so we want to disaggregate those and we can do that by dragging in this ID field, which is unique for each Airbnb. Okay, and now you can see that we've got over 66,000 marks in the view. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom into a certain area. And then what we're gonna do now is bring in the EV charging point data. So we'll drop that into the view, Tableau connects again. And then we'll do the same thing, create a special point for each of those electrical vehicle charging points. I can then add those as a separate marks layer to the view. So it's hard to see because they're using the same encoding. So we're just going to change those to be a shape. We'll make them across. And we'll color them red. And make them a bit larger. Now we just need to disaggregate those as well. We need to find the ID field, which is unique for each charging point. And I'll add that to the detail shelf. And now you can see the charging points show through more clearly. So let's say we want to stay somewhere in this area here. Okay, so we can see both types of spatial points at the moment. We can see all the Airbnbs and all the charging points. So we can do some high level visual analysis of where the Airbnbs are. We can't tell exactly the distance between each Airbnb and the charging point. To do that, we have to actually join the files together. So let's do that now. So I'm just gonna close down the charging point file. It's just gonna tell me it's gonna remove those marks. Okay, so we're gonna edit the Airbnb data source. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the charging points back in, but this time I'm dropping it into the data source page. And you can see that it now adds it as a separate connection to the same data source. So we can now change the name of this to make more sense. So this is the data source, and these are the two connections, Airbnbs and charging points. So the next thing I wanna do is create a join between the two. So if I drag this charging point data out now, it's gonna create what's called a relationship. Um, and that's not what we wanna use because we can't use spatial joins um, with relationships. So I'm gonna take that off. And instead we want to open up this first source and that's going to take us to the physical layer and then we'll drag the charging point data out and this time it creates a join as opposed to a relationship and now we can create um, the spatial join but first of all we need to have spatial data on each side so we're going to create a join calculation and this is going to allow me to create a spatial point from the latitude and longitude fields in that file okay so i've got a spatial point of all of the airbnbs and then we need to create a new calculation on this side, which is gonna be a buffer that's 500 meters around each of the charging points. Okay, so a buffer takes three arguments, geometry, number, and units. So the geometry needs to be a spatial point. We then need to give it the number, and that is gonna be the distance, or what you can consider the radius of the buffer. And then finally, we give it the units to measure in. So we'll use meters. So let's add in those three arguments now. The spatial join that we're performing here is a key part of this analysis, so let's just take a closer look at what's happening with the help of a few images. To start, we have the spatial points of all the Airbnbs represented by the yellow circles on the left, and one example charging point represented by the red cross on the right. We then create a buffer around the charging point of a specified distance, in this case 500 meters. Then, when the join takes place between these two spatial sources, the Airbnb points and the charging point buffers, some points will overlap with a buffer object and others won't. Those points that fall outside of all buffers 
coloured blue here will be filtered out and the other points will be kept so we can continue to work with those in our analysis. Okay, so now I've got a point for the Airbnbs and the buffer around each of the charging points. So now we can pick the intersects, which is a spatial join, side, any of the buffers. Okay, let's head back to the view. And now you can see a number of these marks will be removed. So you can see we've ended up with just over 49,000 marks. So all of the Airbnb points showing in the view now are all within 500 meters of at least one charging point. Okay, so the only marks we can see at the moment are the Airbnbs. So let's create spatial points for the charging points and add those into the view. You see, because these two files are joined now, we've got access to both last few fields. So just make sure we're picking the right one, which is the charging points one. Okay, I can then drop that into the view as a new marks layer. So again, it's brought all those in as one mark. So I just need to disaggregate those by adding in the ID field for each of the charging points and then format them as a red cross. Okay, so it's making more sense now where the Airbnbs are visually. They're located around the charging points as we expect. So let's confirm that they're all within 500 meters of these charging points just by using the radial select tool. Before we do that, I'll just change the units to be metric and have a pick the radial selection tool. See if we go out to 500 meters, that's all of those Airbnbs are within that circle there. And the same if we do here as well. Okay, so we've still got over 53,000 marks in the view. So the first thing I'll do is just gonna filter down to these three charging points of view here is what we're gonna be focusing on. And that'll just make things run a bit quicker. Note that I'm disabling selection for the Airbnb layer to ensure I only select charging points for the filter I'm creating. Okay, and you see we've gone down to 62 marks now. Okay, so now we have these fields joined and in the view, we can actually start to use some other spatial functions such as the distance to calculate the exact distance between them. So to do that, let's create a calculation and I call this Airbnb EV distance. And this uses the distance spatial function. And you can see it takes three arguments, we've got the start, the end and the unit. So these have to both be spatial points and then the units is what we're gonna measure in. So again, we'll use meters to be consistent. So I can just drag this calculation into detail on the Airbnb points. I'm gonna hover over them now. I've got the distance there. So this is 323 meters from this charging point. Okay, let's just format the tooltip. Okay, and now when we hover over, we can see the, the exact distance between the Airbnb and the charging point. And to make this a bit clearer, what we're also gonna do is add in the buffers around the charging points. So we're gonna create another calculation and we'll call this EV buffer. Okay, so again, it takes the three arguments, we're making a spatial point from the EV latitude and longitude, it's gonna be 500 meters. We can add this onto the view as another marks layer. So again, they've all come in as one single mark, so we'll just separate those out using the same EV ID. So now we've got three separate buffers. So let's just format these, we'll make them uh, yellow and more transparent. And also what we can do is move them to the lowest level in the hierarchy here, so all of the marks are on top of them. Okay, I'll also disable the selection for the buffers because I don't need to select them at the moment. So one thing to note here is that most of the Airbnbs are only within range of one of the charging points. But there is one in the middle here which you can see is in range of two. And the distance it's showing up is unusual, it's very large, so it should be within 500 meters, it's actually 720. And the reason that is is because when we make the join, because this Airbnb is within range of two charging points, that row is actually being duplicated. So then when we put on the distance here, which is the Airbnb EV distance, is summing those up. So the way to correct that is to change the aggregation on here to be the minimum. And that just means that the distance that will show on here is the distance to the closest electrical charging point for that Airbnb, which in this case is this one here. Okay, so what if we change our mind and decide we only want to see Airbnbs that are in 200 meters of each charging point and not 500. So we can do that, we can just go and change the join calculation. So first I'll just hide the buffers. You can do that by clicking on this eye icon here, over here. And they turn on and off. So we've we'll got to the data source. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit the join calculation. It's gonna change the value to 200. So we have a buffer over 200 meters. And just to make this a bit easier to see, I'll just split the screen here so you can see that more easily. Okay, so you can see the number of marks is reduced. And now we're just showing the Airbnbs which are much closer to each of the charging points. Let's make the buffer size a bit larger. Okay, and you can see more Airbnbs appearing now. And we can check they're all within 400 meters. This is all very good, but it'd be nice if this was all dynamic and if we could have the buffers be dynamic and just all of this from the interface and not have to change the join calculation. 
So how can we do that? So the best way to do that is actually make the join be the maximum value that we'd ever want it to be, which is in this case, we're gonna say 500 meters. So let's change that. Okay, so we're back to the original point with seeing all of the Airbnbs within 500 meters. Let's bring our buffers back on. So now that we're showing all Airbnbs up to 500 meters, we can then format them to highlight whether they're in range or not. And we can make that range dynamic with a parameter. So let's create that parameter now. I'm gonna call this P distance. This is gonna be an integer. We'll set this as a 500 initially. And we'll make this a range between, let's say 50, 500, and with a step size of 50. Let's show that parameter. So as well as formatting the Airbnb points, we can also dynamically size these buffers. So let's go to our buffer calculation and make this dynamic. So we're going to replace the 500 with the parameter value. Okay, and you'll see now as we change this, the buffers will resize. So now we just need to add the formatting. So we're going to create another calculation. It's going to be called in range. Okay, so what this is saying is it's a Boolean calculation going to return true or false. And it's just saying is the distance between the Airbnb and the EV charging point, is it less than or equal to the parameter distance? Okay, and I'm gonna put that on the color shelf for the Airbnb points. And now you can see we've got two colored Airbnbs. Let's change these colors, because uh, what we want is the, if it's false, if it's outside of range, we want that to be sit in the background, so it's kind of a light gray. And if it's true, it can be more prominent, so make that kind of a bright blue. And now as we change the buffer size, you see the points turn gray if they're outside of the range, if they're outside of that buffer. As we get larger, more of them turn blue as they become in the range that we've set here. So let's just have a look at some of the data behind the scenes for a couple of these points. If I select these two points, go to view data, and then go to full data. So you can see this is all the data for these two values that are in the view. And you can see one of them is in range, it's true. One of them is out of range, that's false, that's the gray one. And how's that being determined? So we've got the two points, we've got the EV points, and this is actually the same point as this point here. And they've got the Airbnb points. And we have the distance between these two. So the distance between this point, the Airbnb, and the EV charging point is shown here. So the distance to the Airbnb that's in range is the distance between this point and this point, and that is 377 meters. So that's why it's true it's in range, because it's less than our value of 450. The second one, is the difference between this point and this point. So the EV and the Airbnb, and that is 487. So that is greater than our 450. So it's in range, it's false. And that's why it's colored gray. Okay, the final thing we might wanna do is actually have Tableau tell us how many points are in range. So how many Airbnbs have we got next to each charging point? Obviously, if it's a very small value, we can just count those manually. So two here, four there, and so on. But it'd be good for Tableau to actually calculate that for us. So we're gonna create one more calculation. I'm gonna call this total in range. And what we wanna do with this calculation is count the IDs of the Airbnbs in range only. So let's do that first bit now. Okay, so what this is saying is, if the Airbnb is in range, then return the ID of that Airbnb, and then we wanna count those. But we don't wanna count the Airbnbs across the whole view, we wanna count them for each charging point. So the way to do that is to fix this calculation at the ID of each charging point. Okay, so the way to read this calculation is what we're saying is for each charging point, I want to count the number of Airbnbs that are in range and return that number. Okay, so let's go to the EV points map layer. I'll take this total in range and put that onto the label. You see those numbers have appeared. I'll just make this a bit larger. Great, so now Tableau is answering that question for us and you can see as we make the buffer smaller, those numbers decrease as we go all the way down. So now I've only got two, four, and one. You can see it's quite useful now to have these other Airbnbs actually in the data set and still showing so they're not being dropped out of the join. Um, for example, if we went down to 150, we've got zero, but we could see just by visually looking at it, there's a few more quite close by. So it might be worth just walking a little bit further if we go up to 200 or 300 meters, and then we'll have more options for Airbnbs. If you'd like to explore a more developed example, follow the link in the description below to this dashboard I created previously that shows a similar analysis, but includes some more functionality such as adding filters for different Airbnb attributes and types of charging points. There's also a blog post explaining how this is built, which I'll link to in the description as well.
follow the links on screen for more videos on Tableau spatial functionality and thanks for watching.